Hello everybody, Anatoly here. Uh, before we begin, a quick announcement uh, that most of you I'm sure are already familiar with. Uh, das Nostalgia now has a Patreon. Without getting into too many details, uh, if you can afford it and you ever wanted to show your support for Das Nostalgia or help Das Nostalgia to go to essentially the next level and become a bigger and better show, uh, now is the time to, to, to contribute, so please, um, the link is uh, patreon.com slash dasnostalgic. Uh, again, thank you very much to uh, whoever contributed already, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm forever grateful. And uh, now let's uh, get on with uh, our usual scheduled programming. Hello and welcome to Das Nostalgia Podcast, episode 24. As usual, I'm your host Anatoly, and today, for your listening pleasure, we have a returning guest. Sir, please introduce yourself. Hi, I'm uh, Matt Bradley Shergi. Uh, I'm the host of a podcast on the 90s cartoon The Critic called Tremometer, and I was on the uh, Interplay um, 10th Anniversary Collection episode uh, not so long ago. <laughs> Yay! I love it when people come back, which doesn't happen often, oh. unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> so, sir, well, I, I guess let's uh, jump right into it. Uh, what are we? He what are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about the Leisure Suit Larry um, DOS game. So these are the ones that Al Lowe worked on, for lack of a better phrase, um, mm -hmm. and it, they came out, you know, from 1987 to 1996. Mm-hmm. And uh, I got into the Sierra games. I didn't grow up with them as a little kid. I think maybe the first one I played in school, they had the Black Cauldron, which happened to be one that Al Lowe worked on mm -hmm. uh, based on the Disney cartoon and, and very loosely the book by the Lloyd Alexander. Um, have you played that one? That one's pretty strange. Yes, briefly. Uh, like it has, well, it's, it's a weird sort of, uh, uh, I remember it being sort of, the, the, the UI is weird for the time, right? It didn't have yes. typing, it had the functions for the, for the actions uh i guess a good attempt to do a kid-friendly game it, it was an okay attempt i also remember it has a lot of different endings um and it has some of the frustrating some of the frustrating stare sequences like you see in other games well you know, let's see uh, of the time yeah <laughs> early <laughs> sierra stares play and stair then, quest people let's i have uh, I, I played that the other day that's great yeah I, let, I, let's I really like let's it. plug this not dos but uh uh, uh, if, dear listeners, you're not familiar with StairQuest and you like old CR games, please just go download it, and it's really worth playing. Yes. <laughs> it's a beautiful piece of satire. So, but the Laser Suit Larry games, I, I started collecting when Sierra did a lot of those compilations in the uh, late 90s. Oh, um, so which one did you have? So I had the one, um, it was a rectangular box. It had Laser Suit Larry um, 1 through 6, it also had a uh, a paperback book that was walkthroughs for every game, but it was sort of written like a narrative. Yes, um, the sort of like, table side guide, right? I have. I, that's right. I, I yes. have. The, I have the first version of that. Yeah, the version that came um, in this uh, compilation. I'm going to look up a, a picture of it because um, there, there's some specific name for this version. I think it's the latest version of that book, and I don't think they ever did an update. For, um, yeah, I think there's only Larry, two. Larry there's only two revisions. One is the is it? first okay. one. I, f I I think Sierra people, please let me know. But I think it's just the first version of that book. I I keep forget what it's called. Even though it's on the shelf, I can't I can't really see it right now. But it's like the first edition is one through three. Ah yes. Yeah. And, and the second edition just adds five and six on that, and then then that's it. That's that basically. But it also has yeah. some other bullshit in there as well, like the stories of creation, just some random. Mm. jokes that you can tell L.O. did not write. <laughs> yeah, th so th this one I'm looking at, it was called part of Sierra's collection series. It was in these big rectangular boxes. They also did um, like King's Quest, Gabriel Knight, mm -hmm. uh, Space Quest, collect uh, Quest for Glory in this series. Yeah, I It says the, five full games. The yeah. picture on the cover is an annoying drawing of Larry next to some women's legs. Uh -huh, um uh -huh. I don't think it's from the cover of a game. It looks like it was original artwork, and it had 
Um, it, yeah, it says on the front, the amorous escapades that shocked America. Right. And, I mean, really, the, these games are not that explicit, but I think, you know, at, at the time, it was pretty novel. Uh, the... Yeah, I guess. Uh, let's let's put it out. Uh, uh, well, let's put a couple of things out there. This is probably sure. going to turn because I'm on this podcast and I caught shit for this before. So fair warning. This is probably going to get into another Sierra Bastion episode, partially. Okay. I mean, yeah. I love these games. Uh, it's one of the favorite franchises. I have stories to tell. Leisure Suit Larry is actually the first adventure game I have played ever. Wow, okay. Yeah, I discovered adventure games late because I didn't speak English and most of them were in English. So, But hmm. as it happens, Leisure Suit Larry actually got translated. Uh, so I played it in school with my friends, um, but but yeah, I, I mean I, I grew up with those games. So, but I'm gonna look back both nostalgically and with a critical eye of today, I guess. And uh, yeah, but I am gonna say that those games never aimed to be pornographic. Everybody knows this, right? I mean, this is the year 2016. I, I think at this point we kind of uh, discovered that. Well, not discovered, but we kind of it solidified that Leisure Suit Larry games were never really dirty. Um, yes. I mean, they they just had some, you know, it's like like sort of bluish jokes a little bit, right? It just uh, it, it had some sort of dirty material, but uh, it, it never got to the point of sort of uh, uh, you know anything remotely pornographic. That's like, right. Like it, it maybe like a like s- something you know it's it's it was the 80s right so you've seen you know a bachelor party mm. and uh, you know porkies, porkies that's about that's about as far as it goes that's right and i think um and the marketing of course and the cover the box art for this game kind of played up the sexy angle right but um that might have also been to make it stand apart from the other sierra games which were mostly family oriented at the time for the most part yeah, I mean, maybe maybe not police quest, but that's a, a different thing. Yeah, I mean, they're all kind of different, but most of them were not. This is cl- this is clearly t- targeting a very specific group, uh, which also turned out to be not to be the case, right? Eventually, when they released some stats, it turned out women liked Leisure Suit Larry as well. Like a surprising mm. n- a num- number of players and letters was from women. Um, so there was a lot of that going on. But let's. Uh, but uh, that collection that you had, it wasn't uh, greatest hits and misses. No, no, it was not. So it was uh, the other one. Hmm. Oh, weird. I know the box yeah, gr- that you're talking about because I have one for Police Quest. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Greatest hits and misses might have been the one that also came with um, uh, seven in there. No, maybe? no, 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 no. It oh. actually was before. It didn't even have the full version of six. I don't think. At, at that point, it, it's it, it's 1994. Yeah, okay. But yeah, I, okay. So that was before. Yeah, but oh. it was also at that point. I think the CD version of Six was out. It, it that collection is is great, but it's really hard to come by nowadays. It's fairly mm. rare, and it's pretty okay. s- sought after. Not like anything super rare, but as far as you know, there are some Sierra titles that are like really hard to find. But uh, this one is like out of the collections. I think Greatest Hits and Misses is is pretty up there. Uh, I see. Yep. But let's uh, let's start with the let's start in the beginning with the. Uh, Time tra- let's time travel back almost 30 years now uh, to 1987. Gee, that's, yeah, next year it'll be uh, yeah. 30 wow. years. Wow, that's time flies, good. we're old. Whatever. Yes. <laughs> uh, okay. I so am young. I am so young. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's my morning chant in the mirror. Um, oh, very good. So, 1987, right? The original game comes out. Leisure Suit Larry in the Land of the Lounge Lizards. And... Uh, becomes a sleeper hit, right? It wasn't a hit originally. That's right. Uh, it, it actually took nearly like half a year for it to start turning profit. Like the word of mouth picked up and some holiday sales picked up. Uh, and then it sort of spread. Um, but Alicia's with Larry, the first game, is actually an update of an early year Sierra title, soft porn adventure, an Apple II game that they didn't develop in-house they got somebody somebody else's game that they republished uh famous for featuring uh a, a risque photo of women in the in the hot tub in an outdoors hot tub on the cover and one of the women is of course roberta williams that's right famously uh yeah i, th- I think it's in the bu- there's a book i read um hackers that part of it talks about the start of sierra as a company mm-hmm and Ken Williams is interviewed extensively, and he talks about how he really had to give his wife, Roberta, a lot of drinks to convince her to post yes. topless in, in that cover. Mm-hmm. Um, and the, the, guy who, the guy who serves them drinks, the, the, 
the waiter in there is like a local local waiter from a lo- local place some <laughs> some place so they just found it and i think the the hot tub is the williams's hot tub <laughs> so a very like there, there cottage go. industry but it sold extremely well so sierra ken williams of course liked money as as we know mm-hmm. uh, so uh, sierra was first and foremost a business so it sold really well soft porn soft uh, you know moved some units and by the way we should probably say it's it's not a good game <laughs> no no and i think what, what's interesting and i, I think you're, you're getting to this point is it was sort of several a, a few years later after that um al Lowe was uh, who worked on a lot of disney games at sierra at the time like winnie the pooh and black cauldron mm-hmm. had, had mentioned to ken williams oh gee you know i it was sort of fun we did when we did stuff like soft porn adventure could we remake that? And Ken Williams said, well, maybe when our license with Disney runs out. And, and that's what happened. As soon as Disney's license ran out, Al Lowe, he, he, he took the structure of Softport Adventure, but he added very much his own sense of humor. And yes, the, the puzzles are in, lifted almost entirely wholesale. Uh, right. and this and as well as uh, the, the and the, the settings the rooms and everything right but what Lo cleverly did is he just recognized how, how unpleasantly sleazy the original game was <laughs> yes. and turned it into sort of a, a, like a very self-aware parody um, and that game was made in in rather short time with pretty much Lo programmed the game right uh, directly and uh, and mark crow did the graphics they already had the template to work with so they knew the locations and everything and uh, uh, from what i understand it was a fairly fast process uh also i think it's a known story now that lo didn't uh, didn't take a big sierra was you know uh, in a bit of a financial flux at the time Mm. So Lo didn't take the big payment, but rather settled for royalties, uh, which they didn't think were going to be as big as they oh I see as, as became. Uh. I hope I'm not getting this backwards. Oh my god, I I, I was in a live live hangout with Lo like a few months ago. He talked about all of this, so it, it would be shitty if I just forgot all of this, <laughs> got it wrong. But I think I'm getting it right. So yeah, he got royalties, and he actually was never. After that, he never actually became the. He never was actually an employee of Sierra at one point, because really? he was so one of those people who got fired. Yes. Oh, okay. So he he kept the money and they kept. Yeah, he was a consultant basically, and he worked as a consultant for Sierra for like a decade. Mm. So so yeah, but Leisure Suit Larry. So it, it's a really, I mean, the first game, it's a Sierra AGI game. It looks like King's Quest, but it's adult and it has a bit of a more playful style uh and uh, you know dirty jokes and the silly gameplay and that that however lo lifted the soft porn structure right and that is actually the structure it remained for the majority of the games uh that same sort of right. you, you have a, you have to go through a series of women that larry has to seduce to get to the last woman in a fairly open-ended world and in fact i'm gonna say that the game that abandons that concept the most is considered to be the worst of the series, but we'll get mm. to that. That's right. Uh, later, but yeah. So you're 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 Larry, an aging virgin in a, a land of lost wages, and you just bop around and trying to seduce women until the the original game has a timer on it, right? If I forget how many game hours is it, twelve or twenty four hours pass. Uh, you explode, <laughs> and um, and yeah. So I, I don't really know how to describe Lucius with Larry. It's a, it's a game that's so like embedded in my psyche that I'm mm-hmm. having a hard trouble just sort of verbalizing what it's about and what it what it looks like. Yeah, one thing that's nice about the original Laser Suit Larry is it's a nice short game and it's to the point. Yeah, and it's I think very part short. Of that, and part of that comes from the structure of the sophomore adventure game we mm-hmm. mentioned. It. And it, it almost takes, you know, elements that are in other Sierra games and just sort of presents them. Like, you, you have a casino sort of area. Mm-hmm. You don't really have unfair stair puzzles. Like, they, they didn't take that from King's Quest 3. No, but, but you can certainly die uh, easily. In, in almost in almost every single screen. Uh, right. Well, and, and, maybe one of... Hmm, now that I'm thinking about... Okay, so 
in every third screen you can die for sure. <laughs> and, and there's like a 50-50 chance that you can die on, on the on every second <laughs> on every second screen. I'd Even say... and, and a lot of the deaths are I mean, they're funny like Space Quest, but yes, they're also they are. quite but they're more unfair, I would say, than Space Quest. Um, one one thing that I that always uh, gets me killed when I replay the original game. It's flush in the toilet. It, <laughs> well, oh yeah, that's a classic one. Flushing the toilet, it overflows. And um, but it's when you if you have sex uh, or to get the you know you have to sleep with the woman as mm-hmm. you said right. And there's a prostitute mm-hmm. is I think the first one in the in the game. Yes. And um, you have sex. You put on the condom. To have sex with her because if you don't, oh, you, uh, that's right. I know what you mean. You, and then, you die of the clap, but if you keep the condom on and you don't take it if, off, as soon as you, you don't step take it off, the, street, the police arrest yes. you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Even though it's show- and it's confusing. The animation has Larry put his clothes back on. And so it's like, even if he had a condom on underneath his clothes, why would the cop see it? Like, it's not really an obvious in, puzzle. I think it's I just something. I think in the VGA over version, over it's like elaborated when it says like, you look down and start blushing or something like that. Oh, it's okay, like, yeah. sure. Yeah, he just left his dick <laughs> out or something. I don't That's know. Right. Uh, but I'd say the, the puzzles are also really unfair. Uh, me and my friend playing it, it took us so long to get to the pills. Uh, no walkthroughs for us back then or internet. So it literally, I think, took months for us to figure out how to get the pills. And the pills are on the window ledge, right? Yes, okay, the, that you have across. to. You have to. So you have to have a hammer, and you have to tie yourself up with the uh, with the ribbon that you have to remember to take from the hotel room. Which, if you leave, the door is perma locked. So, as every good CR game, this is another thing that was added onto Softborn. So, deaths on nearly every screen, and uh, an ability to to put yourself in at a dead end in Legion of Larry more so because while you're in like in a trash can you can you can throw any item in the trash can and, and it will be permanently yes. lost or you can use you can waste items on, you have money oh, money is an item in the first one money is an item as well and you need to gamble at one point you can play the blackjack or or slot machine, or slot machine unfortunately uh, uh not good <laughs> No, and the only way you can win, you know, well, by, you save scum is by cheating. You yeah. have to save and load. And, yeah, and, and they knew it, and it's just there mm-hmm. to extend a very short game. But uh, what was I going to say? Oh, like you can you can give items to like people, and they all take them, and you're done. Like when when uh, I remember playing it very early on, and like uh, using the rose on the hobo. And it has a response where, like, peace, love, and happiness, and you hand your rose oh, to no. the hobo, <laughs> and, and, and he carries it away, and that's it. You lost the item, the crucial item that you need, so... You can't win the game. Uh. Yeah, so, so it's that. But there's also funny responses with the text parser, because it's a text game. You can go somewhere and type, like, masturbate and stuff, and it will and it'll say, like, isn't the whole point to do less of it, Larry, or some such shit? <laughs> so, so there's yeah. all those, like, sort of j- jokes... Uh, that game particularly, first game I don't think has anything particularly. We're gonna come up on that. It's a you know old game, <laughs> as we said, nearly thirty years old. So there is, you know, the game is the games are full of sort of sometimes fairly racist and sexist jokes um, that are you know do cross the line. But the first game I feel is rather what is is kind of devoid of that, uh, apart from a a store owner. Yeah, the Indian store yeah, owner. Yeah, so um, he has an accent that's really, well, it's racist. So, but it is, and you have to consider. I think when it was made, and th- and that doesn't well, make it okay. But you look at like Short Circuit Two. Oh, where, like, a oh white yeah. Guy oh Jesus, Indian. yes. I was just talking right? about this okay. the other day. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, they did it for like in the first one and the sequel. Uh, <laughs> uh, and stuff. I think th- I think the only movie from that time we kind of give a pass to is Aliens, right? Uh, where, where Spanish characters played by Jewish woman and brown face. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that, really. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So uh. it's because it's such an awesome character, we all love it. Even 30 years later, I don't think anybody sure. really complains about Vasquez. But, but yeah, they, that's, that's what happened. So yes, it's the game, it's a product of its time, but yes, it does not make it okay. And I will say some jokes in Legion of Larry still hold up very well, just because, you know, they're, <clears throat> they're not, you know, they're not hurtful, they're innocent. So it's, it's okay if they're a little bit dirty. I mean, nothing wrong with a dirty joke every now and again. That's what, they, that's why they exist. We're all human, we can laugh off the most horrible things. But yes, some, sometimes, sometimes the Legion of Larry games do. Do do sort of go to that territory where you look at it now and you're like, yikesies. Uh, and I think, uh, I'm pretty sure Al Lowe admits as much, you know. 
Uh huh. Uh, also, like uh, you mentioned, Mark Crow did did the graphics, and he also you know did the graphics famously for Space Quest and uh, Police Quest, even I think with the first one. Well, I think he did and, the graphics for all Sierra games. Oh, oh did he for all the old yeah. ones? And um, you, you look at the animation in the uh, the disco sequence in this mm -hmm. first Leisure Suit Larry, and it's really quite good. It's great. Um, it, it's full of all those little touches, and I I just mm -hmm. like the more darker. It's a darker game because it takes place at night. Uh, so yes. a lot of blues and uh, and blacks and all the stuff, and then you have like some cartoony colors, like bright yellows in the middle, or greens. It's it's very sort of like uh, it's a dim palette, but but it has a sort of cartoony style. You can tell even with the limited, you know, the half the resolution that Sierra used out of compatibility, uh, y y it looks a bit more cartoony than let's say even Space Quest. I would say in a way, it's just its own thing, I guess. Yeah, the, even the size of Larry's head is a bit bigger and yes. more exaggerated. <laughs> I have a 3D printed AGI Larry. On, oh, that's on, great. On my shelf. <laughs> it, it's funny. Funny to look at. But yeah, I, I will say that I do recommend the first game. The, mm -hmm. the, the original 87 version. Although I personally like the remake more. We'll get to that. Sure. Uh, but yeah, I, I would say play it. It's a short game. I mean, puzzles are really frustrating. <laughs> they can be. There's a lot of deaths and dead ends, but it's all kind of lighthearted, and the game is short, so that helps. Uh, yeah, it, it's a fun game. I think it's short. I think also it's perhaps more playable than, um, you know, maybe the first King's Quest game, and that although yes, you can die, it's it, it's less annoying, um, and I think the the humor makes it a bit easier to take. Um, there's no extremely difficult action sequences, mm -hmm. and, and so it's fair. If you were to show someone an example of an AGI adventure game and expect someone to actually beat it, you know, I think the, this original Leisure Suit Larry would be a good choice to give someone. I'd say because Space Quest One is fairly unfair at parts. The beginning, I think, especially of Space Quest One, right, where you get the yeah, and the, the, you get hunted on the ship, and the. Um... Police quest is a procedural. Nobody wants that. Is a is there inter? Is there also the driving? My God. It's yeah. Uh. So yeah, I'd say Legion of Larry One Bliss Plus. Also, that fairly unusual for a graphic adventure of the time, sort of open worldiness of it. You know, you can go to almost every location immediately. Right. Uh, that sort of adds to that experience. Even if you're stuck, you can keep exploring. Yeah, I'd say for an AGI game, it's it 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 does warrant a recommendation. Well, it warrants a recommendation in general, but yes, I think it's a sort of good uh, introductory point. Uh, it was my first adventure, so I can't complain. Mm. Shall we move on to... Yes, let, let's move on to... Is this the one... Is the next game, the second Leisure Suit Larry game, Leisure Suit Larry goes looking for love in several wrong places. Right. Is this the one that you said is the least favorite, or the one that's most hated, you think? That's the one that's recognized by most people as as, yeah. as the as the least successful entry, and also probably my my least favorite <laughs> entry as well, so much so that I haven't played it f for years. <laughs> uh, it arrived a year later, Right and already boost, right. boosted an updated engine. Uh, Sierra updated to the SCI engine at that point with a proper 320 by 200 EGA uh, and better parser and better graphics and a, and a mouse pointer for just walking really and stuff. And what happened is it, I think it does quite a few things wrong. Mm -hmm. First of all, it's unlike the first game. This is a very linear adventure, sort of a. Space Quest 2 style almost, where you really cannot veer off the path too much. Uh, and then it also toned down the... I think that was like an official statement that they actually wanted to tone down the sexiness, the naughtiness, I guess. Yep. Uh, that's a bit uh, weird. So, so it has less naughty jokes, and I think that also shows. And then it also introduces a villain, you know, like... Uh, what the Legend of Larry games never needed is is a villain. I mean, I guess I didn't know that at the time yet. So the the yeah, the villain. It almost feels like they're doing like a bad James Bond. Yes, like, the, well, Powers it's supposed to be thing. like a yeah. Doctor No Nookie. Uh huh. It's it, a it, Doctor No. Yeah. Um, and the, it, yeah, it has a spy plot. Also, like the first game was so sort of realistic in a way. You know, you're just a guy trying to get laid and in the sure. in the city town late at night, and you gamble and you bang hookers and uh, and the, it's like casino and whatever. But here, the plot is, and the puzzles are terrible too. But but the plot is Larry accidentally wins a vacation on a game show. 
and then uh, there's a case of mistaken identity. He ends up with a, like a microfilm, and a KGB is on his ass, and Doctor Nonuki is also after him. And in the end, he ends up on this island where there's a tribe that he proves his worthiness to, and uh, it's a mess. <laughs> yeah, like I don't. It, it is a mess. Yeah, the only thing I like of the game, it really is the beginning. And where it, it picks up a, a little bit after the first game is over and Larry is mowing the front lawn of the girl you sleep with in the first one. And, and he thinks, oh, wow, I'm going to, you know, get married, have a family. This is the love of my life. But then she comes home and it was like, oh, it's just a one night affair. Right. And that Larry starts off on his ass again at the beginning, I think, is it, it's clever. It's it, it's sort of a fun way to put him there. But then uh, even the way that Larry is, is drawn in this game uh, we mentioned in the first one, he's more cartoony. Right. It's weird. It's more realistic. It's realistic, but still cartoony. So he's just a like little, a dude yes. with a big head. Like right, and and you have the receding hairline. I think looks weird. It's yeah. not. It, yeah. It's not satisfying. I'm, I'm looking at the cover artwork right now, and it has him with a huge nose and big teeth. Oh yeah, and that's are... not what he looks like in the game no, at all. No, no. Uh, it, it's yeah. In the older buildings, the, the the sort of quirky cartoon style is gone in favor of a more sort of traditional sort of Sierra, almost police quest like. Uh, that's right. Like it looks yep. like police quest too a lot uh, with mm -hmm. the right angles and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, so even oh, you know what we forgot to mention about the first game? The questions. Ah, yeah, how could we forget that? I sure. know, so the, right. So, so the first game for copy protection... It's not a copy protection. <laughs> well, no, but it, it had questions that, that you could answer to, to get into the game, that you had to answer to test, you know, how old you were. Yes. And considering when the game came out, there might be a lot of things they reference that you know, modern uh, players oh, yes. might not recognize. Yeah. Especially TV show references and sports, and it, it kind of goes too. all over the place. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. So, so you you're allowed to get one question wrong, and two will kick you out of the game. Uh, uh, I mean, minor annoyance because I played it as a kid, and yeah, some questions were hard for me just because some of them were based on the culture that I didn't know. In the Russian adaptation, I actually managed to uh, sort of do away with with a lot of those, replacing them with the Russian references instead, which I liked. Oh a lot. wow! Okay. Um, but um, but yeah, so. Right off the get-go, the second game doesn't have that. It has the traditional manual copy protection with phone numbers. Uh, there's like a picture of a, of a woman that's displayed to you and it's like, enter her phone number. And you have to yep. look in the manual and do that and stuff. So, yeah, I, I really, I can't remember most of, of Leisure Suit Larry 2. And uh, uh, besides its presentation, which is, you know, better in high resolution, but it's still weirdly unfitting. I think it loses out without humor. And I just remember puzzles being really bad and the story being bad and everything is bad. <laughs> the, the puzzles are bad. The other thing, I mean, aside from the opening area where you can kind of explore the town a little bit, each segment afterwards, like the cruise ship or the islands, it's really limited. You can't really explore. Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't do the right thing right away, you get killed mm -hmm. or the KGB captures you and, and tortures you and things like that. It's um, it's just an extremely frustrating game that's not, uh, that's not as funny as the original. And and a, as you alluded to earlier, Larry doesn't get to sleep with a lot of women in this game, and that frankly is part of the appeal and point of the series. Yeah, second game really moved away from that original concept, and as a result, it wasn't it wasn't good. It was just like a new adventure, Sierra adventure starring Larry. And I don't think that's what people wanted. And the design was weak because of it, I think. Uh, sure. It wasn't uh, creative enough. Yeah. The, the music uh, you could listen to on a, a sound card, and they had MIDI music, and that was sort of fun. That they could do a bit. Uh, Al Lowe could do a bit more at the score oh, yeah, of the like game. M MT32. Uh, nice score. Or ad lib if you were poor. Um, but, uh, you know, it looks all right. But I, I personally would recommend skipping this one. Like, I don't think it's worth playing unless you're just. Unless you're in it. For the whole for the whole run, yeah. If you play this, I mean, the only thing that really ties this to the other game is not that there's a huge overarching plot, but the, the character of Patty, who becomes more important, right? She first is appears at the very very end, yeah, briefly, but uh, and she's named diff differently thing, right? She's named Polyester Patty, uh, right? At that of point, passionate, yeah, Patty. and. Uh, that's that. But at this point, I, I believe the game sold really well and was a big success. Uh, and reviewed well as well. If you look at some of the contemporary reviews, 
Mm. Uh, a lot of reviewers say that it improved on the original's formula and all that stuff. All that stuff that we now know is quite not not the case. <laughs> I, I can't believe this quote from Compute Magazine about Larry 2. The story is as interesting as anything you're likely to find on network TV and less predictable to boot. Wow. It. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It, it was a different time. Yeah, simpler then. times back then. <laughs> simpler times. <laughs> so shall oh, we move right. on? So the at this point, sure. uh, Legion of Slayer games was selling through the roof. Sierra, I think, sold more. It was widely pirated to Sierra on the record saying that they had been selling more hint books than copies of the game, <laughs> which still didn't hurt them. Um, and 1989 uh, sees the release of Legion of Slayer 3, Passion Patty and Pursuit. Of the pulsating <laughs> pectorals. Oh my god. Uh, yes. The alliteration is killing me. Um, and uh, this one is uh, sort of a f- one of the fan favorites. And I, for the life of me, cannot figure out why. Because I also don't like it. But I will say it does improve many things. Like right off the get-go, the questions are back. But they're not questions to enter the game. Uh, they're... They're there to determine the level of naughtiness. Uh, mm. If you answer all the questions, you get the you know the the game at its naughtiest with some nudity. And by the way, this this game is the nudity is mutually inclusive. Uh, That's right. There's some dicks in there. Yep. Um, and if you get all the questions wrong, you'll get like the the baby level where like everything is obscured and stuff. So that's fairly novel, and I think not as punishing and a good throwback. Uh, the style is a bit more cartoony. Uh, it's sort of like a blend between the second game because it's higher res, more realistic. But Larry now has a huge head, uh, and the things like the buildings are a bit more le- less straight lines here and there. So there is that. Um, yeah, I have a big problem with this game's story and, and puzzle design in general because what happens is the game opens five years later, and Larry's married to the uh, daughter of the. Uh, of the chief of the tribe, who is now a whole big like hotel mogul, and uh, so the, his wife chucks him out and turns lesbian, and uh, Larry changes out, you know, to his to his normal clothes and goes on an, another adventure. Uh, but uh, so that's the setup. Uh, bad, but, but <laughs> there's like a whole bunch of like sexist or racist jokes right up right up front. <laughs> this time, yeah, lesbian jokes. Yeah, yeah it's like oh, she's heard lesbian, uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, some some racist natives, and uh, uh, but it brings back this sort of semi open world structure and multiple women, so that's back as well. So in a way, it's it's an improvement in those areas. So it, it has better structure, better graphical presentation, and you know, uh, tits and dicks are, are also back in, and also the jokes are back in as well. Um, puzzles, however, are, are, are really terrible. Well, that's why I understand when people tell me that they like Legion of Tyre three. I I I've never been able to. Fi- I would have never been able. I only finished this game with a with a walkthrough, and I I w- I've never figured it out figured it out otherwise it's really unfair really re- really bad there is a maze that's a copy protection but you also get to play mm. as patty at the end of the game um uh and once again uh, yeah i don't even know so uh, well the end of the g- end the end of the game is weird because what happens in, uh, so y- you you meet patty right she is the woman that you have to get with at the end while going through all the other women who, who dump you uh, and then you find out that she has a boyfriend, you leave and you get lost in the jungle, and then you play as Patty, you rescue Larry from the jungle, then fight off lesbian cannibals, uh, don't know what that's all yes. about, and then the ending is of course another seer of fourth wall, fourth wall breaking, where you end up in the Sierra offices, um, you know, working on the Larry game. It reminds me of a little bit of the ending to Space Quest 3. Well, the same thing happened. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so, um, yeah. But, uh, I mean, Legion of Larry 3 
is uh, is an improvement in many areas, but I personally feel that the puzzle design is absolutely dreadful. I can't even think of like so much of it is I, I've seen a let's play of it maybe last year again, and I still can't remember most of the stuff. I just black it out. Like like those puzzles are atrocious. I don't even want to remember them. One puzzle that that strikes me as being really annoying the last time I played it is you have to go to a gym and work mm -hmm. out on different parts of the gym equipment. And you have to repeat the same actions over and over. And according to this uh, walkthrough I'm looking at now, the amount of reps you have to do is random from 19 to over 200. E so well, it's I think it's actually dependent on your cycles, on your oh on, really? Yeah, yeah it's processor it? okay. dependent. So yeah, it's one of those glitches. So uh, it, it's it's it wasn't meant to be like 200. So like if nowadays if, I think if you play in Scum VM, it just fixed. And if you play in DOSBox, if you set your cycle slow enough, you, you you won't have to do 200 things. I might be wrong about this, but I think that's what it is. It, but that, that's like quite an annoying, repetitive puzzle for no reason. Oh, um, also, bit... Larry gets buff. Like, I, I yes. just don't buy the idea. I don't think that belonged. It, it's against the character and the nature of the, like the nerd dream, mm -hmm. dream guy who who gets lucky or gets in weird sex comedy situations. Um, the, the beginning of the game, I think, is okay, even though there's, there's racism and uh, a anti-women, anti-lesbian stuff. You have um, you get to explore a bit mm -hmm. in, in the resort, and part of that is sort of nice. I have a bigger problem with the second part of the game where you play as Patty, in which it's like... Um, there, it's just like a go to hell series of yeah. arcade sequences. You'd rather where you're on a log and you're going through the water, yeah. and, and it, it's just terrible. It's bad. It's like Sierra at its worst, and it's all back to back to back arcade sequences. It has a, yeah, and has a, but it has a feature for custom curse that you can put in that will print in big letters. That's right. Every time you die, <laughs> so you just put in like fucking Sierra games, and it makes yes, <laughs> and and you, that makes the dying actually a bit more tolerable. Uh, I like that death from the uh, smoking smoking pot. There's a smoking pot death for for Patty uh, that I like. That's fairly creative. That you get so high, like you start, you get lifted off the ground, <laughs> and then you just float into like a canyon, and then oh. she does the cartoon Wally Coyote, you know, thing where she realizes there's nothing oh. underneath her and just falls and stuff. Oh. So I mean, it has those nice animation touches. The production quality is fairly high. And stuff. It does. It, but, it, the the yeah. close-up drawings of the women, I think, look look as good as you could expect with yeah. this um, engine at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's. Uh, I mean, but I personally, I don't know. Maybe with the walkthrough, it would work. But again, I, I think the design is what holds that uh, game back, and a lot of the jokes, and it didn't really age fairly well. No. Um. So I mean, this game is better i don't know if you can uh, i guess you can skip it if you want but it, it it loosely sort of leads into the next one i don't i mean it's not like the plots are that important like in king's quest or space quest uh, between the games they all fairly stand alone because the the, the story right. basically repeats for each of the games and all the tropes are established in the first two games essentially like the first game really establishes that sort of uh, open world, multiple women, one is a gold digger, one is not who you want, another one just escapes you, and then you get to the one. And then the second game essentially right. establishes a trope of uh, you got to the one, but the day later she dumps you, which is repeated multiple times throughout the series. So that's essentially the template uh, most of the games stick to. Um, and successfully so, right? You kind of feel at home. Uh, playing playing those games, uh, but yeah, I personally wouldn't would recommend skipping Legends of Larry three as well. It also has a bunch of time sequences, right at the end, like as you mentioned. Yes, like, but you right. also not yep. just arcade, but like you have to type things at a specific time. Uh, and although SCI engine pauses the game, unlike the AGI, it pauses mm. the game when you type. It just you know it's really annoying. Just it, it's a very limited window. Yeah, it, it, it's an annoying game near the end, and the story uh, the story is a story, and essentially, hey, with what we know now, the story essentially resets itself later anyway. So, it's sure. not like uh, it's not like it matters. Shall we move on? I think so. Yes. Well, we should probably talk about Legion's Larry Four situation, right? 
So there's a bit of a gap sure. uh, from 89 to 91. Uh, there was no fourth Legion of Lara game. And it sort of became in joke and in CR. Uh, Legion of Lara 4 is referenced in many games, uh, including Legion of Lara 5 uh, directly. And um, uh, there are multiple reasons are cited, right? Were cited at, uh, at, uh, in the press at the time. But uh, I think the official thing was that Al Lowe at that point was working on the online version of the game because Sierra at that point already had one sort of unsuccessful online experience in the 80s and then was gearing up towards the, the Imagination network. That's right. And yeah. stuff. But that never came to be that eight couple of years and of, of Al Lowe's life and a lot of money for the company. So essentially he just decided to, to skip it as a joke and many things i think at one point he also cited like oh al what is, like an interview it was like oh what are you working on now like larry four and he's like no larry five ah, you know yeah, and, sure. and stuff like that <laughs> so um yeah, whatever so and i mean legend of larry three actually wraps up right as well uh like there's a hap right. happy end but that was not to be in 1991, so Legion Suit Larry 5, Passionate Patty does a little undercover work. And uh, technically, the game is bumped up again to the, into the new generation with the, its VGA graphics, um, music and uh, sound. Uh, and uh, the new sort of art style, the cartoony direction of uh, Bill Davis, the Cubist artist, and uh, <clears throat> uh, William Skirvin as a, as a lead artist. Everything is, is just exaggeratedly weirdly cartoony, and uh, the game now has a point-and-click interface instead of a parser. Um, I think this is also known to be one of the lesser, one of the lesser games in the series, and uh, revisiting it recently, I can totally see why. This game is really heavy on the cutscenes. There's a lot of non-interactive story sequences. There's there's some good ideas that I like. First of all, for Sierra, you cannot die. Right. Which was a very unusual move for Sierra at the time. But a lot of the game is also unnecessary. Basically, instead of designing things so you couldn't sort of like miss an item or whatever, now there's just all those possibilities programmed in, like what happens if you miss an item? Or what happens if you don't do something, and then you're at a later point in the game when you cannot come back? Making almost the entirety of the game optional. It's essentially just an interactive movie, for the most part. I like the art style a lot, but again, it's one of those games where it has a villain, so another one once more proving that that's not what Leisure Suit Larry needs. And it has a story this time, and you get to play as two characters throughout the game. So the story is, uh, uh Larry works for, uh, a, a production company, uh, where his position is rewinding beta tapes. And, uh, they're looking for, for a host of a show, America's Hottest Home Videos. Uh, and it needs to send somebody undercover to film the candidates. And somebody unsexy, so they pick Larry. <laughs> uh, but meanwhile, there's a conspiracy in the background with a, a local mafia trying to sort of. Uh, that's actually a fairly good subplot that I always felt that the mafia's porn ring, this porn sales are down, right? Because their porn sales are, b are being diminished by, you know, legal porn on TV, basically. Mm. Um, so their plan is they're gonna put a dirty show on TV. And then pay off this, uh, what is that group, the conservatives against almost everything? Uh, oh, conservatives against nearly, nearly everything. everything? Kane, right? So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so they paid off this, this group to, uh, to sort of rally against it, to, to, to put uh, 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 better regulations for TV into place. <laughs> Which is, I mean, it's good, uh, very political, but... Uh, so you play as Larry uh, as a scout for those women in this open worldly kind of adventure same thing where you have to get to the several to three women um, and then periodically 
uh, the gameplay is interrupted and you play in a, in a linear adventure, more linear adventure as Passionate Patty, who's been recruited uh, by the FBI to uh, find proof that the same mafia is behind uh, popularizing rap amongst youth uh, with subliminal messages in the songs. And those two, you know, the, 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 like, you would finish, as Larry, you would finish one portion of the game and he would have a dream where he dreams of... Uh, Larry dreams of Patty, always, in some kind of a romantic setting. And uh, Patty always dreams of being with millionaires for some reason. One of them, yes. a lot of, lot of Trump stuff, mm -hmm. who is referred in this game as Donald Trump. <laughs> uh, and you go to Atlantic City and uh, there is Ivana... Uh, tramp and the, the tramp casino and the tramp resort and whatever weird and uh, yeah so I, I like the game style I do find that the game Sierra games awfully unfairly challenging but I think stripping out most of the challenge and making it just sort of a, a breeze to go through uh, was a mistake it's not entertaining uh, most of the jokes I actually find I like a lot of the sort of double entendres and stuff and just sort of the, the backgrounds have a lot of sort of naughty stuff in them. I do like that, but there's some really questionable jokes in this one. Like the Patty gets a tracker device installed uh, somewhere by a doctor with a drill. Uh, that was weird. And at one point she has a copier toner explode uh, in her face. And uh, then she essentially postures as a, as a black woman. Uh, you know, it's Patty in blackface and, and, and different clothing to, to go to the re recording studio because, you know, rap people are black. Uh, and there are a couple of other stuff, but also, I don't know what it is. Some jokes I like and some jokes are just really weird. Uh, and the game is not challenging. So, I, I think... Yeah, the, the game's pretty easy, like you said. Um... I think it gets better as it goes along. The beginning, when you're just Larry, like cleaning up videotapes and stuff, is a little bit slow. And uh, but once it gets going, it gets better. The art style is very colorful, and, and the backgrounds and the animation. I do uh, like with the color the, style, the, the the background style a lot. Yes, it's uh, it, it's it's fun. It's it's sort of pop art. It's a bit it can be a bit um surreal. Mm -hmm. And for, for once, Larry in the game looks like he does on the cover of the mm -hmm. box, which is nice. And um, great music, too. Yes, by uh, Craig Safan. Yep. Oh, yeah, I remember uh, another racist joke in that, too, as well, because the dental assistant, you give her a fake green card in an attempt to sleep with her. Uh, she's already dental assistant. She has a job. Uh, yeah, weird. So, some, some, like, uh, some weird stuff. Like, Patty's story also has a lot of, like, weird sexism about it. And the worst joke, the, the blackface joke in, the, in almost the entire series. And also, I mean, the, the joke about, you know, sort of like anti-rap, and I think what the name of, like, the record yeah. label of the radio is K-R-A-P, crap. Yeah, it's, it's that. I mean, some of it, you know, to, there's some some sort of jabs, if you can call it that, that are not jokes, like at the names, the, the, the what is it, what's the not MC Hammer? I forget his name. Oh, geez, I, I know what so, you're talking about. Something Hammer, but whatever, and the he's a part of the, of the group Two Life to Screw. And stuff, but yeah, the subliminal mm. message in in the rap record is kind of you know, it's kind of it, it reeks of okay, grandpa, you know. <laughs> uh, yes, sure, but to be fair, Aulo was uh, an older man. Well, yeah, of course. Uh, I mean, we know exactly where game, it came right? from. So yes, um, so there is there is that, but yeah, the uh, I like the fact that that early on in the Sierra games, the, the decision was made to to make it more fair. But again, the fact that entire chunks of the game are pretty much optional and will be finished no matter what a kind of i mean i guess adds replay value if you would want to but in the end you wouldn't really um you wouldn't really uh gain anything from that in the end of the game you sort of face off with the with the bad guy at the presidential dinner that's attended by vice president and before that you get the phone call from george senior after saving people from a crashing plane <laughs> and uh yeah and uh 
you, you go on, on a date with you you and Patty and the vice president <laughs> and uh, yeah I, I don't know just something about it uh, is unsatisfying I would say I, I guess play it it's it's fairly short and again not challenging if you can get past a bunch of questionable jokes I think that's that's about it really the graphics are nice the presentation is really nice it's worth it it's worth just sure. for that and also around this time, the remake of um, yes. Leisure Suit Larry came out. The first remake, I should say. Th that's um, my f first adventure game. Not the original Leisure Suit Larry, but I have ah. not discovered adventure games till, till way in the 90s. So um, uh, that game got translated by, by Russian fans unofficially. But everything got translated. Graphics, texts. It, it's, it's, it's localization of the caliber of like Ace Attorney style localizations. Like full-on completely rewritten yeah. stuff that's 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 beautiful and really really funny um so that uh Leisure Suit Larry 1 remake similar style visually to Leisure Suit Larry 5 but a lot more sleazy and dark and some people for some reason don't like it I love it I, I think it's great there's a lot more it's less cartoony there's more texture to it there's more details like uh, sort of uh, when you go to the uh, into the hooker's room the room is now the view is from the outside of the window looking in and you can see the like the windowsill with like cigarette butts and dirt and mm. all that stuff i do like that um so everything is upgraded it's the same game uh the women look beautiful and exaggerated in vga and the the dance the disco dance <laughs> uh, the beethoven's uh uh which one is that Oh shit! Uh, losing it now. The, uh, the oh the Saturday Night Fever uh, dance. Yeah, like it's even uh, uh, it's even more sort of detailed and stuff. And just generally now there's music on every screen. That's great. I love the presentation, uh, and I just I, I like the game. Again, it's the same game. Now the dialogue has been expanded, uh, so there's uh, longer descriptions for stuff and uh, a time limit has been removed you cannot die from playing the game for too long and, and they do a good job with uh you have the the zipper icon mm -hmm. you can do in things a lot of jokes with that and um yeah zipper basically replaces everything depending on what depending on what you use it on but i do like the graphics i like the graphics like the the atmosphere it's the same game yes it's a bit unfair like we said, there's nothing that's really changed. It's just when you die, instead of... Yeah, when you die in the first Leisure Suit Larry, there's like this whole sequence in the original where they have like a whole bunch of grams and like it's a lab underground. Uh, and like they put like a new head on, on Larry and send them out. Uh, in the VGA remake, he's thrown in a giant blender mm. and gets swished around and then just sort of put together again. Uh, and resurrected so that's that the questions have been updated and now there is an actual copy protection question at the end of it which is something that i hate <laughs> um and uh yeah i would recommend it wholeheartedly i recommend the legion Larry one remake uh, i do like how it's a bit sleazy sleazier than the yes. first one uh, and yeah it still has all the same stuff open world and and you'll be done with it in no time nowadays. Yeah, the remake to the original is very good. The art style is 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 fun. I remember it being even a little more out there than what you see in Larry Five. It and it it just is um out of all the VGA remakes Sierra did of the time, I think it's the one that takes the most uh, chances with the art style and it really works oh, yeah. in favor of that character. Yeah, definitely. As opposed to, especially, I recall the King's Quest One VGA remake was really conservative. Well, there was no VGA remake. Of the, uh, the, it the, was the SCI the point remake. Of, like, SCI, yeah, okay. Yeah, it was. Yep. It was still EGA, but yeah, it was just that sort of traditional stuff. But I think, uh, actually, out of all the CR remakes, I think it's the it's the second best. I would say. Well, it depends on who you ask, uh, because uh, Quest for Glory VGA, I think, mm. is the best remake. But some people. The purists will will hate the remake because it changed a lot of things. Uh, as far as staying faithful to the original, I would say that's the best one in in the gameplay mechanics. Not a lot of change. It's mostly just the art and texts and and the presentation that's been updated. Uh, but I do feel that 
uh, Quest for Glory VGA is the best remake, and Legion of Larry VGA is right underneath it. Uh, they're very close together. Very good updates, I feel. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Quest for Glory One, the remake has a, I think, a pretty good battle system too. Um, uh, the balance has shifted a lot, but I do, I actually do. In both of those cases, I personally prefer. It might might be a surprise to some, but I prefer uh, Legion of Larry, Legion of Larry One remake and quest for glory remake to the original so i'd rather play the vga versions mm -hmm. uh, all, all the detail and especially in quest for glory of the um the spielberg town and everything all the fun animations in there yeah is pretty good but yeah back, back to larry it's uh the re the vga remake is very good and um although this isn't a dos game i'll mention this briefly i played a bit of the 2013 remake of the original larry game yeah and I don't. I just got sad playing it. I backed it. Did you? Unfortunately, okay. that was before anything. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it has its moments, but the quality jump is is different. Some locations are really well done, and some animations are dreadful. Um, like everything in a wedding suit uh, suite is like terribly done and stuff like that, and just. I don't, do we really need another remake? <laughs> I, that's the thing, too. I mean, if they would have remade something and, and remade, like, two and made it really cool or something, that could have been... But it's like, in the first game, is just so brief, and... Uh, I, I mean, it's nice for it to have voices, but I'd rather have seen Larry on a new adventure or, I don't know, done something else. Well, if, they wanted um, to do that, and then look what happened. Mm, yeah, all this, this scandal of that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, anyway, well. yes. Uh, Leisure Suit Larry 6, Shape Up or Slip Out. Yes, 1993 first version. That's right, and um, then a, a talkie version on CD was a year 19, later. 1994 for both DOS and Windows. And there's actually, uh, well, a significant difference between uh, th those two. Uh, that's the only, the, the second, the, the CD version is an SVGA, right? High resolution. Yes. And it's the only SVGA game in the traditional Sierra VGA style, if that makes sense. Uh, because later mm. uh, Sierra games are either like FMV or photographs or ah, yeah. or cartoons. This one, uh, Legion of Larry Six, to begin with, had a weird style of like collage style. Some people find it really hard on the eyes, and I guess it is. It's really pop art. It's like it's it's a, it's the same style that's been established in Legion of Larry Five and the remake of the first game, but this time everything has sort of those weird cutout textures to it um the women were made slightly more realistic but still exaggerated like just realistic shading and stuff uh and uh, annoyingly two separate icons for there's a separate icon for pickup and and another one for use mm. uh that gets in the way a little bit but the game itself uh i think is quite good in a way again you cannot die i mean you can but there is an oops button that will restore you uh, to the point before death and there is no dead ends also this game is long like this is finally all larry games are actually kind of short up until this one this is like a proper length adventure and the story goes uh larry goes on a tv show and ends up winning uh a vacation at the at the resort called La Costa Lora. <laughs> uh, and that is it. Once again, it, it actually sticks to the traditional formula of open world uh, women, but this time the number of women is doubled, I think. There's six, I want to say. It's been a while since I played this. Uh, that, that sounds about right, yeah. And uh, there's there's so much to explore in the setting of La Costa Lora. Yes. It's, it's really nice. It, the... It, the jokes are back. Uh, they're, they're, the 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 jokes are sort of not naughty, and I actually like the puzzle design uh, a lot. Uh, there's a song <laughs> at one point. Um, mm -hmm. I like the graphical style, as I mentioned, that a lot of people hate, and it's almost uh, it's almost a good Larry game, except. I don't like how it treats Larry. It's really mean-spirited. Mm. Uh, like, Larry constantly gets hurt. Um, at one point, gets like a liposuction tube up his ass. 
uh, in a, in a sequence that was horrific, I think, uh, and and not comedic. It's also weirdly sexist at times. It, like, is uh, six the one where there's a, a transgender woman? Yes, there is ah, one okay, where yeah, yeah, and it has like a moment when he's like thrown up on the beach, and then cut mm. to the next morning where he's like gargling water. Yep, in the bathroom. Uh, yeah, it's 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 just weirdly unpleasant at times. I do like the design a lot. There's also an overly gay character. If you get a game over, uh, if you, you know, if you agree to accompany him someplace, and there's some weird jokes where it's like, oh, we're climbing the ladder to to go off the diving board and zoom in on that ass. Uh, mm. Yeah, so he does quite a few missteps like that. I mean, certain part again, the puzzle design I think is really good. Uh, I like the puzzles. I remember first and actually the last time I played the entirety of this game is uh, I don't remember what year it was, but I remember sitting. I started sometime around maybe ten o'clock at night. And I think I finished around like four in the morning. Wow! Like I finished that game in one sitting. It was tough, and it's it's a long game. And I like the presentation. I like the music. I like the weird, crazy uh, backgrounds. Uh, I like the design on the women. I like just some of the jokes and stuff. But yeah, the fact that it just treats Larry poorly and has some really humor that. And at the time, I mean, we're moving into early 90s right so you'd think things be a bit more progressive and although i don't know you uh, silence of the lambs um oh what else you had things like it was sort of that in between yeah, time, i guess basic instinct and uh, silence of the lambs yeah basic but, instinct or uh i guess this was like all the, the movies that i like uh, yeah all the movies that i like a lot actually <laughs> but, but I, I think it just here it goes into a bit of because it's presented to be as a comedic thing I think it comes off a bit more hurtful. I don't uh, know. I, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm not a part of that community, so I, I probably wouldn't know if, if being depicted as a villain or a, as a comic relief, which one is worse. But, uh, but yeah, now that I think about it, I, I don't know. It's really weird. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, no, I just think it's, first and foremost, I just think it's mean-spirited in many ways. And that sort of takes all, other than that, it's almost like one of the best designed uh, Larry games. But it, it has its shortcomings. Personally, I'd say play it. I mean, if you're gonna get grossed out by jokes, I mean, can't help you and can't blame you for sure. Mm. How do you did you did you play that? I, I did play Larry Six, and I I think it might be my my favorite out of the series that I've played all the way through. I, I have not had a chance to play through Larry Seven, which is the next one we're talking about. Yes. Uh, so much because I just recently picked it up as part of a sale on GOG, uh, but. Larry Six, it, the art style is really fun. Uh, you, it, you, the game has a chance to breathe, and you really get to explore. I think that's what I like about it. Is if you want, you can like really take your time looking at all the nooks and crannies and, and uh, looking yes, at all the funny jokes. There's a lot of responses, and also this time the CD version, of course, has the voice acting, which is yes. actually really good, and has that guy who ended up doing Larry, you know, well, in 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 six six seven and the remake. I do not like the voice for Larry. That you might don't? be controversial. It, it's I a little like bit it. too, too high cartoony. pitched. Really? A little more cartoony for me. And I, I don't. It's not like I expect Larry to be like I'm laser suit Larry. <laughs> but it's it's just so, it, it's so high pitched. Uh, it's a little bit too high pitched for me, and I don't know why that is. I need. I to, like it. I think it fits with the cartoony visuals. It, it, it's a better fit, I think, with the design of the character in Larry Seven. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. The interface of the game, it's a little annoying how much of the screen yes. it takes up. And it's also a bit strange when you talk to the women, you get these like really detailed, uh, really gorgeous close-ups. And yes. then Larry's mouth doesn't really animate. It's just sort of there at the bottom in like this still photo. It's just a weird presentation. Hmm. And I'm not sure why, why he doesn't He doesn't okay. lip sync? Uh, it, it's... Maybe it's not the lip sync, but it's like the placement of the head is just so strange. Well, yeah, it's it's in two different places between the because what happens right. in, the, in the original version the, the portraits are floaty, and in the SVGA version the portraits are docked on the bottom because like two thirds of the screen is that weird fucking pink. That's it. Uh, That's overlay. Exactly what I'm thinking of. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, now it's it's placed in the, in the originally I played the I played the VGA version originally, so so there is that, but. 
again, there's so many cool touches and I remember playing it and like halfway through the game like there's this area that's a restaurant and there's swimmers that are behind in the window and after you like uh, after you you're done with about half the game uh, this the swimmers become naked and stuff like that so it, it is like a lot of those things like it's almost a good game but yeah I will say out of the out of the previous games it's it's clearly the best design which only leads forward to Legion Suit Larry uh, 7 yes that another game that doesn't have a number the uh, so it's called Legion Suit Larry Love for Sale um, that came out in 1996 for both DOS and Windows simultaneously. Um, and I will say that apart from Quest for Glory games, I will say that that is the best design CR game out there. Wow. And not only that, it also has the best UI of any point and click adventure game as well. Um, something that un criminally is underused and ignored. Um, but, uh, uh, yeah, it, it's also one of those games that, uh, one of the three CR games with the cartoons, like, animated Disney-esque style, I guess, is what they originally pitched it as when the King's, uh, King's Quest Seven was coming around, and mm -hmm. it's also the game that, that has, that does it the best, so amongst the three games, so it was King's, King's Quest Seven, uh, Torrance Passage, and Legion of Larry Seven. Uh, Larry 7 does that style the best. It's the most consistent and the best quality. Sometimes the frame rate is low, but the animations are very consistent and just really, really cool. Uh, so what I like about Legion's Larry 7? Well, uh, the setup is the girl from the last game leaves him, right? And he, yep. uh, as he's about to escape the burning building, which he set on fire unwittingly, <laughs> uh, he set fire to, uh, uh, he picks up a ticket for a cruise. So, the game takes place uh, in an open world, you know, sort of open worldish. Again, it's the same thing. You got multiple women that you have to seduce and get to the captain, Captain Thigh. Uh, <laughs> uh, so the art style is nice and sexy, and this this uh, this legendary game actually has like full on Easter eggs with like tits and stuff. Uh, uh, it's. Uh, in this weird sort of almost reminiscent of like German porn cartoons kind of. Mm. But it's it's the jokes are really funny. Yes, there's a few questionable jokes here and there and a couple of gay characters, but the jokes are really funny, really well written. Uh the game for Legion's Lair game, well, it's weirdly sex positive. Uh actually. Very surprising. And um it treats Larry nicely. Unlike the sixth one, I think they learned the lesson from that. And that generally can you can die, you can have dead ends. It's very LucasArtsy in its design. And the UI, the interface is, uh, you have a sort of a little pointer that's like a condom in a wrapper. Uh, and it gets erect when you hover over <laughs> uh, uh, an active object. You click on it, and a little window pops up. And the window is literally a selection of custom verbs. So it can be anything. Like, you can... Click on like, oh, fish head, and you click on it, and it will pop up. Uh, look, pick up, touch, lick. You know, it's custom for each object, and there is a, there is a an option to punch up your own custom verb. Uh, that that you want to do. Very clever, uh, not very often used, but uh, it's possible to unlock some Easter eggs. Uh, there is multiple women. Uh, with funny Hollywood names, it's like uh, Do Me More, uh, Jamie Lee Coitus, uh, fuck, uh, um, uh, Annette, 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 Annette Boning, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and more. I think there's also six of them at this. There's a fantastic animated sequence where Larry gets drugged, and it's that uh, recreation of Disney's Fantasia with the uh, Sugar Plum Fairy dances when the mushrooms dance, but this time it's condoms. Uh, and just, I really, really like that game. Uh, and I think uh, w when uh, I was on the Hangout with L.O., he confirmed that that is his favorite game, rightfully so. Uh, incredibly well designed, really fun to look at. There's tons of secrets. There's this, uh, there's this game, like built-in game, uh, 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 Where's Dildo? <laughs> where, where, where on many screens there are... Uh, there are, there are dildos that look like Waldo <laughs> that you click and you get to, you need to sort of find all of them to unlock a special ex Easter egg at the end. 
Uh, and again, the UI is great, the puzzle design is great, it's very open world, you'll never get tired of exploring, there's so many. In between all the custom verbs and, and cool UI, uh, you'll get a lot of stuff, and there's... Uh, there's colorful characters, there's like, there's Ken Williams that, uh, the, ba the balloon making guy that looks like Ken Williams and whatever you, you ask him to make for you, he always, always makes a dick. <laughs> and, uh, there's a, um, a sailor janitor that swears every second word. Uh, and just, uh, all this really, really cool stuff. I, I love this game and I cannot recommend it enough. I I'm glad it's on GOG, buy it, whatever, it's, it it's really worth it. Uh, the, clearly the series sort of went out on a high note, uh, at least as the original Sierra games are concerned. Although the end, it, the ending, it ends on a cliffhanger, so, uh, the, the, uh, a UFO comes down and swoops up the cruise ship and teases the Leisure Larry, uh, lost in space, uh, and that never happened. And right. that was the last uh, game for, for DOS. Yeah, this game I really need to play more of. I only recently picked it up on GOG, and uh, it was a game that was a little bit hard to find for a while there. because Yes, it was a it, late late Sierra game. It was a late Sierra game. It was left out of a lot of the later compilations mm -hmm. because it has a, a scene that's more... Um, it's an Easter egg animated scene that I understand is more sort of uh, sexually explicit. It really wasn't that sexually explicit. That's what they made you believe. There is some bare butt and, and, and some boobs. and But the funny thing enough, I, all they had to do was, like, I remember Elo trying, saying that Vivendi had to, like, change some scripts or whatever. Oh, yeah. Honestly, honestly those things are in, in their separate video files. All they had to do is, like, copy the right ending file over it and would have been done with it. But, yeah, it did get left out because all the early compilations came out before it. And the uh, the one that came later, the Vivendi one, well, the really shit one. Uh, yes. It didn't oh. really. It didn't. It did. They didn't bother putting it on there. Um, but yeah, I, I do recommend this game highly. You you should play it. Uh, yeah, no, I, I will. You oh. and everyone else. Oh. I, I know some people for some reason don't like the art style and stuff, but I like it. The voice work is also top notch. Just generally all around the quality game. And it's nice in the beginning of this one, you get to hear the Leisure Suit Larry theme played by a live band mm -hmm. with real instruments. That's uh, an Owl I think, plays the saxophone on that. Probably. Yeah. It, it's, it's really good. Uh, what else? All the subsequent games uh, were for Windows or not made by Sierra. We will probably not mention them. Well, Leisure Suit Larry Casino was the last Larry title that Sierra issued. That was a multiplayer game that blew. Uh, nobody cared. And then uh, after that, let's not let's not talk about what happened after that. But in yeah. the early '90s, Sierra also somehow managed to release the Laffer Utilities. I, I did play this. This was part of the compilation I owned. And, and a play is not the right word, but it, that's a bizarre product. Uh, originally, a, a DOS release, uh, a, a set of DOS utilities. I think towards the tail when I, I tried to narrow it down today, but the flap is just some marked uh, with. The date is November of 1991, so uh, mm. that's when the DOS version was released, with the Windows version following shortly in the spring of 1992. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a collection of various utilities. First of all, it's just a print shop with Larry, for the most part of it. Yeah, you can print signs and notices, and it's weird. Sometimes it's weird stuff like sexual harassment... Uh, uh, will be like not not you know like encouraged or some such shit, and you're like, okay, 1991. <laughs> there, there, a big part of it I recall is a joke generator, and you can sort of set a, a toggle to generator. how explicit the jokes are and there's it a, censors stuff. There's a there's a excuse generator, uh, but overall, I think the price is listed as like 35.99 or something like mm. that. Not worth no. it. No, 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 no. And the Greatest Hits and Misses collection includes the later Windows version uh, for free. Well, obviously. Well, not for free, but <laughs> as a part of the package. The package. Um, yeah, it, it it's it's really, really gimmicky, um, that, that product. I'm trying to, you know, I'm looking at, at the, the cover, and um, <laughs> the way I got Leisure Suit Larry, I was not um, 17 at the time. 
mm-hmm. and the the collection was rated M. Mm-hmm. So I had my mom buy it for me, huh. and yeah, nice. I lied and said, you know, oh, this is just a silly game. I mean, and it turns out, you know, as we have mentioned, it's not that right. explicit. <laughs> right, right. But my mom w- was, I caught her at a good time. She was tired after working a full day of work, and it was only $20 or something on clearance. And um, Good deal. Yeah, and, and, and she got it for me, and then, uh, and then later seemed to regret the decision, but it was too late by that point. <laughs> nah, I played the first game with my friend. It took us months to figure out. Again, it was the first like adventure game that we encountered. Yeah. And um, I remember when we finally beat it, uh, uh, you know, in the first uh, VGA game, it ends with you and Eve in the bed, and yeah. she's kind of naked. Again, not explicit in the slightest, I don't think. And um, I remember his dad walking through the room <laughs> uh, right at that moment, uh-huh. and he's just like, "Hmm, what kind of games are you playing?" And just left. And uh, okay, whatever. No, nobody cared. It's like at the no, same no, time, no. I have that same story. It was it was Russia early nineties? Like I was watching Nightmare on Elm Street two uh, one, ah, s- one yeah, summer, that's an interesting one. Yes. And and there's a scene at the pool right before uh, Freddy all of a sudden jumps into the real world and and starts chasing after teenagers. You're all my children now. But but <laughs> r- right before that, you know, there's some some like an explicit sh- shot of like a camera panning by. Of, of course, sort of like there's some teenagers making out there and some nudity, and I remember my mother walking into the room and being like, "What the hell are you watching?" And I was like, "At the Miller and Elm Street 2. and she was like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> so yeah, nobody gave a fuck. Uh, sure. good, good, good thing too. Uh, again, I don't think either of those, you know, Night Elm Street two or 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 any of the Leisure Suit Larry games really did anything harmful to my to my psyche. Uh, you know, I, I probably grew a bit more familiar with the dirty jokes, but again, who isn't at that age? So, uh, yeah, I think I was just at the right age to play those games, to be honest. Uh, I also think that at this point in time, I, I might have actually have outgrown most of them, uh, except for the ones that are actually well-designed. Or, and the first game that I, I just have so much nostalgia for, it will just never stop being fun to me. But that's that, so, yeah. I mean, it's a it's a good, interesting series for the time. Rather unique. I mean, um, not not to say that the comedy games were unusual for the time. Late '80s seems to be where a lot of them did originate, right? We got yes. everything from interactive fiction, you know, with the Hitchhiker's Guide and bureaucracy and everything else. So it's not it wasn't really a new concept, but I guess it was a bit of a novel concept for a game to be funny and dirty at the same time so it's an inter- interesting decade of, of you know a series lasted for for a decade uh, in its original form before it sort of went all to shit <laughs> as other as other people picked up the rights and tried to slap them onto something yeah it's really too bad i, I don't want to get into that either because it has yeah. nothing to do with dos but it it just just don't bother with the other ones i'll just say that much yeah pretty much yes yes uh so is this it? This is it? Are we... I, I think this is it. The, the one um, last thing I, I noticed in my research, and I think this would have been cool, um, had the Kickstarter remake of Larry 1 not had the um, the sort of scandals and so forth that it had, there were actually did start early development on a remake of Larry 2. And I think done right, that could have really been something. Maybe. because, Or maybe not. Maybe they would have had the same jokes and line for line the same stuff and just with voices in it i don't know but um well who knows i mean they had josh mandel working on those games so the writing clearly like that's one thing the writing was very much punched up in uh in the new remake of the first one you you can tell every time there's a pun came up you can tell josh mandel who wrote it um, and, and poor Josh Mandel. I mean, he was uncredited writer on so many of this. Oh year. yes, and and <laughs> and not <laughs> only he was uncredited. He did uncredited work on many games. I mean, he also worked for Sega. He worked for uh, Legend. Like he did. Uh, hmm, okay, yeah. Uncredited work on Shannara and and stuff like that. So, uh, was it Shannara? Yes, uh, I think so. He did some text work. He's there under pseudonym, as is Ken Allen. Mm. Um, so, uh, but yeah, uh, but again, I recommend the series if you're, if you, if you manage to, yeah, I know the, the older we get, 
the more time passes, it's harder to to sort of forgive the 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 some overtly racist and sexist jokes in those games. But I mean, it's not all there was. There is some good-natured humor. There are some naughty jokes that are just harmless. Uh, so I do think that the series still warrants a, a good look beyond just being, you know, a historically important series of adventure games. I agree. The, the quality between the games is more consistent than some other um, Sierra games. Um, I would say with the exception of Quest for Glory, I think mm -hmm. those are, are all pretty good. Um, but it, it it's fun. It's They're not too hard. The early ones are kind of short, so so that's nice. And it's it's just a fun series. And even now in, in, in modern games, you don't see a lot of games with this sort of like body humor in it. <laughs> right, it, right. It's it it makes it quite you know it, it's as if your perverted grandpa had a bit too much to drink <laughs> on, on holiday <laughs> while you're at the beach and starts telling you like sort of naughty jokes. Yeah, yeah, very much so. <laughs> uh, I guess. Well, so, uh, yeah, yeah. Play Larry games is what we're yeah, trying to say. Play Larry, and um, there it's it's pretty easy to find to oh, find yeah. them nowadays through good old games and places like that. It's uh. So it's very nice. These used to be harder to find, and now they're not mm -hmm. so difficult. And it's uh, they're they're good. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. Well, sir, thank you very much for being here. Oh, uh, you're welcome. Anytime. <laughs> when uh, if people want to contact you online and, and see some of your other work, where can they find you? Yeah, best place uh, on Twitter at m a t w b t. Um, I have I'm working on a piece for uh, Games Radar right now. And I have a piece in PC Gamer Magazine, but I don't know what issue. Hmm. Um, but it, it's somewhere out there. So I've been doing some writing, trying to work more on that. And, uh, and yeah, so again, at Twitter, um, at M-A-T-W-B-T is the best way to get in contact with me. Nice. And dear listeners, if you have a topic, I can't stress this enough, uh, that you would like to talk about that's related to DOS games, please, please contact me on Twitter, on Facebook, or wherever. Look for Das Nostalgia and contact me and you can be here talking about good old games, forgotten or not, something that maybe you wish more people played or something uh, that was near, uh, that was, that was, that you feel nostalgic about from your childhood. It's all good. Just ask me and we'll do it. <laughs> so, well, <laughs> sir, thank you once again for being here. Oh, you're welcome. And Thank you to all the listeners for listening this far, and uh, goodbye, and hopefully we'll see each other again on another episode of Dust Nostalgia Podcast. Bye. Bye.